live in a world where someone can kill three Muslim students and some people are willing to argue that this is a parking dispute. We live in a world where in some European countries Muslim women are denied access to education and work and some people will tell them that this is for their own good. We live in a world where Muslim kids or Jewish kids can be called in by the police for questioning just for wearing a headscarf or a kippah. To hear people talk about immigration, including some Labour Party people, you will not believe that in the 1950s, British public sector organisations like London Transport, like the big hospitals, actually went to the Caribbean to recruit people. They actually went and recruited people, and now people have the nerve to say that immigrants are a drain on the public sector, a public sector they have built in the 50s and 60s and 70s. You know, it is immigration, we're here in the middle of London, it is immigration that has made London such a vibrant global city. Why do people from all over the world want to come and live in work in London? It's not because of Nigel Farage, I can tell you that. It's because, it's because of the, the cultural energy that successive waves of immigrants have brought to life. I am an immigrant. But oddly enough, I'm the sort of immigrant that you don't hear Nigel Farage complaining about very much. You might want to complain about the Australian, the American, uh, the Canadian bankers who come here and help wreck our financial system, but Nigel never mentions them. But what we have instead is Nigel Farage saying all sorts of untrue, dishonest, unfair things about immigrants, and the sad thing is he's largely not challenged. It was pointed out to me recently that the very first episode of Doctor Who, a series which was a landmark in my career, and the backbone of British entertainment, was developed by a Canadian, directed by an Indian, and produced by a Jewish woman, showing that even the most quintessential British culture is the product of migrants. Today's monster of anti-Semitism remains very much in our midst. Take the neo-Nazi Golden Dawn in Greece, which of course we've heard so eloquently spoken about. Bowles suggests that anti-Semitism is all too widespread in all too many countries, including Poland and Greece, where surveys have revealed alarming levels of hatred and prejudice against Jewish people. Now we must say loudly and clearly to our Jewish sisters and brothers, we stand with you against hatred and we will not rest until the scourge of anti-Semitism is finally extinguished from Europe. Uh, we all remember infamous Daily Mail stories about Central and East European citizens uh, as benefit abusers. This was obviously a lie as most of their campaign because all the data showed that Central and East Europeans were contributing more but this wasn't shown in the press at the beginning. Or we have seen uh, stories about uh, uh, buses uh, and flights full of Romanians coming here on, uh, ten, on, the, on December. This hasn't happened, it was another Daily Mail live. And the threat of racism has not vanished with the decline and the split of Pegida. The letter, the, the, their success was just the tip of the iceberg um, of anti-Muslim racism and hate against refugees, which, which is remaining widespread. And Pegida also acted as a propellant for radicalization. Violent incidents against Muslims and refugees have increased by 130% since Pegida marches. And I say that there's no problem with Islam, we have a problem with racism in our country. We will never forget that uh... The neo Nazis of Golden Dawn, they rose because of this racism, of racism, Islamophobia. I mean, they attacked the immigrants. We, we had the murder of Shazdat Mikman, he was stabbed to death, and after they murdered Pablo Fisas. So, this is the legacy of uh, racist politics in Greece, and what the European Union did for that. 
they rewarded the Greek government, the previous one, by making uh, a minister, a commissioner for migration. Today we are here because we are concerned at the tone, at the tone of politicians and certain section of our society in this country. Uh, whether it is in the media about Muslims, whether it is in the form of um, legal legislations on immigration bills. We are at going through a very difficult and challenging time. A time in which people want to divide us. People want to put us into boxes. People want to stereotype us. From the perspective of the Muslim community, it is a very challenging time indeed. And today, we want to send this message that this country is all of ours. We all belong to this country. And that we will stand up to anybody who wants to divide us, stereotype us, put us into a box. Have you noticed how people suddenly become sudden converts to gay rights, women's rights and animal welfare, but only when Muslims are involved? As a gay man, I will never ever allow the oppression of LGBT people to be used to oppress anybody else. As Naya and the brothers have said, it's clear, it's unequivocal that we have the moral majority. It's clear we have the moral authority. It's the right argument. It was the right argument then, it's the right argument today, and it'll be the right argument in a year's time. Six weeks before the election, let's make sure that the streets of London, Berlin, the streets of Athens are filled with anti-racists, anti-fascists, not blaming immigrants, but standing out and organising to make sure that we stop these people. Because if you look at what's happening, I'm not arguing that we're in a period that's the same as the 1930s, but we have a choice. I think you've seen barbarism take place when you see the rise of fascists. We were told that these people would never come back again, and here we see them again. We have to raise that flag against the Islamophobia, anti-Semitism, and racism that's taking place. And we are making sure that we organize our communities to get to this demonstration on the 21st of March. Because this demonstration, This demonstration is going to be an opportunity for us to send a signal, not just the UK, but hopefully with our colleagues European-wide, that we are completely aligned to the uh, politics of those in the power in Europe who are seeking to scapegoat minorities, and we will not stand for it.